the talent, the flair, and the controversy. Sugar Sean O'Malley has managed to rank high in every category when it comes to fame and fighting abilities. And with his 17 wins and one loss record, plus bantamweight gold strapped to his waist, there's no doubt he'll achieve McGregor status pretty soon. I mean, he's already so famous that you think you know everything about him. But you'd be wrong. Did you know that he was disgusted by MMA at first? Or that he suffers from an actual medical condition? Or what about the two times he's been suspended? Or doping violations? So join me as we explore 10 fascinating facts about Sugar Sean O'Malley. Number 10. He was disgusted by MMA. I'm honestly not surprised, because what else do you expect from a skinny, underweight 5'11 teenager? The first time Sean saw MMA was in his early teen years, when he took a peek at what his dad was watching on TV, and he absolutely hated it. The idea of fighting was so bizarre to this kid that he couldn't get why two men were elbowing each other in the first place. Not to mention he was genuinely concerned about the damage those kicks were doing, and how their ribs were even intact after such a beating. Probably a young teenager, my dad was watching and I thought it was disgusting. I remember thinking, how do they not break their ribs when they get kicked? And mm. why are they elbowing each other in the head? I thought it was disgusting. As a result, young O'Malley went and tattled on his dad to his mom, who forced him to change the channel and put something kid-friendly on. I mean, who would have thought that one of the meanest fighters used to be disgusted by MMA? Number 9. He's a high school dropout. Fortunately for us, Sean's feelings about education weren't much different from MMA. God knows what he would have done if he'd excelled as a student, but I guess we'll never know because Sean dropped out of high school midway through his sophomore year. Of course, he couldn't get away with it that easily, and Sugar was forced to enroll in sort of a boot camp, as he called it. He was supposed to get a GED from there, but he was expelled for getting into a fight. His parents then enrolled him in an alternate high school, and he did end up getting a degree, but he always thought he should be doing something else. Well, luckily for us, that something else turned out to be cage fighting. Number 8. He did multiple combat sports That's right, the same kid who puked at the thought of fighting ended up testing his skills in four forms of combat sports. Around the age of 16, Sean accompanied a friend to a fighting gym, decided to give it a go just for the heck of it. Young Sugar couldn't even tell the difference between Southpaw and Orthodox, so he did what felt natural and found that it worked. Oh, the kid's natural. Yep, that was what the coaches said. Since studying never made sense anyways, Sean was lucky to find something that did, and he's never looked back ever since. Before his UFC run, Sean dabbled in kickboxing, having an undefeated record of 4-0. He also went 2-0 for in amateur boxing and 1-0 in professional boxing. And you guessed it, that single win was by TKO as well. Number 7. He's been suspended for drug violations. Twice. Sean's first violation was extremely risky because it came after only his second fight in the UFC. Sugar had already not fought for a year since UFC 222, and he was expected to fight Jose Alberto Quinanes so at UFC 229, but USADA gave him a six-month suspension for Osterine use. Knowing Sean, you're probably thinking it's something like weed, but... It's not a narcotic, it's a performance enhancer. Sean claimed that a tainted supplement was the cause of Austrian being in his system. And wait, because it even gets worse. Sean waited his suspension out, and he's booked to face Marlon Vera at UFC 239 when he tested positive for Austrian again. Tainted supplements, I didn't understand that you could, I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna test for something if I'm not taking it. Like that, that was my mindset before. In the end, Usada ruled that it was indeed a tainted supplement, but in between the investigations, Sugar ended up getting another six-month suspension, and his next fight in the UFC came two years after his first. Number 6. He's an advocate for the devil's lettuce I bet this makes a lot of sense after his drug violations, but the truth is, Sean's mostly stoned when he's not fighting. If you're a hardcore Sugar fan, you must have seen him indulge at least once. Hell, he's even smoked weed with Snoop Dogg. So it's safe to say that Sean and marijuana go hand in hand, and whether it's medical or recreational, Sugar's advocating for it. He feels that one of the best ways people can improve is through marijuana use. And hey, if it makes sense for him, it makes sense for me. That's why he was furious when he heard about Louise Penna and Tim Elliott getting suspended for testing positive for weed. He believes it's embarrassing that this is even a rule in this day and age. Number 5. He suffers from foot drop Sugar seems like the whole package when he's on top of his game. But there's one issue that keeps sprouting up every other year. 
Sean's come close to losing quite a few fights because of his leg and foot issues. In fact, his only career loss to Marlon Vera was also because of a foot injury during the match. Well, it turns out that he suffers from a medical condition called foot drop. This happens when one of the nerves in your legs gets damaged. As a result, it's hard for the person to lift the front part of their foot. Fortunately for Sugar, his foot drop isn't as severe as most people. And while it has irritated him over the years, I'd say he's doing well for himself. Number 4. His hairstyles convey different messages There's no doubt that his hairstyles are the best way of stealing the spotlight. And Sean does claim that's a huge reason why he keeps changing his hair color. Literally, people are just going crazy about my hair. I was like, I want to steal the headlines every fight week just with my hair. But a few of his hairstyles have been known to deliver a message. For example, his rainbow-colored hair in 2020 was in wake of COVID, and the multiple colors stood for all races from around the globe who were facing tough times. Then for his fight against Marlon Vera, he dyed his hair to match the Ecuadorian fan to show love to his Ecuadorian fans. His recent pink hairstyle matches the packaging for Sweet Sweat, which was a sponsored brand for UFC 292. Number 3. He has a podcast If you've ever seen Sean's interviews, you'd know he isn't afraid to speak in his mind. And that probably comes from the fact that he can say anything on his own podcast. Sean co-hosts the Timbo Sugar Show with his longtime friend and coach, Tim Welch. Sean and Tim talk about self-improvement and getting better in every way possible, but with a touch of humor on the side. From lifestyle and recreational drugs to gaming, MMA, and even the UFC, the show features it all. Number 2. He's in an open relationship I'm not sure if I can really call it an open relationship, because Sean has a very unique arrangement with his wife, Dana Gonzalez. Sean revealed that he's allowed to be intimate with other women, but his wife can't have any romantic interactions with other men. It's an open relationship. We're in an open relationship, and I don't even want to call it that. I don't want to call it any label. According to Sean, he treats Dana like a queen and pays for everything, so having women on the side is fair. If he were an average Joe and wasn't successful, this wouldn't be the case. Needless to say, Sugar's gained a lot of controversy for his unique relationship, but hey, as long as it works for him and his wife, what we really think of it doesn't matter. Number 1. The Origin of His Nickname while most fighters aren't exactly lucky when it comes to nicknames, Sean definitely struck gold with the nickname Sugar. And no, there's no inspirational story behind it. It was just something that happened by chance and stuck with the bantamweight champ. Early on in his fighting days, when O'Malley was still training in his hometown, Helena, Montana, one of his coaches started calling him Sugar. When Sean asked him the reason, the coach replied, because you're sweet to watch. Sugar, Johnny Ajo, my first coach in, M in uh, Montana. Sugar, he said, I'm like, why that? Because like, you're so sweet to watch. Years later, everyone's calling him Sugar now. Which of these facts surprised you the most? Go ahead and tell us your valuable opinion in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our videos. And that's it for today. Until then, remember to protect yourself at all times.